Hi Stampers, Rose Grunewald here, coming at you from my stamping studio in New Holstein, Wisconsin. And today I'm going to show you how I created this gorgeous card using my brand new Share What You Love bundle. <clears throat> we'll get started right away. Okay, so for my card base, I'm using Very Vanilla Thick. And I've got this piece cut four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it at five and a half inches. And I'm just going to fold that over and set that aside. Now I'm using the designer series paper from the bundle. And the piece I'm using has the pearlized flowers. Do you see how pretty that is? You can probably see the pearl as I kind of twist and turn that paper so you can see the pearlizing and the flowers and the leaves. But the back side is this gorgeous, rich greens with some light splotches going through there. And these leaves are outlined in black and that is really gonna pop against a black layer that just peeks out a little bit around the edges. Whenever I do layers that just peek out around the edges like that, I always cut the bigger layer one eighth of an inch bigger than my smaller layer. So this piece of basic black is four and three quarters by three and a half inches, and this layer is just one eighth inch smaller. And I'll post all the dimensions for this card on my blog. Make sure you're checking that out www.countrycardsbyrose.com I'm going to use my snail adhesive to get that layer glued together. Making sure my three sides are lining up evenly. secure that down. Now this piece whoops, is going to adhere right to my card base in the center and so I'm going to do that right away too. Again I'm using my snail adhesive. You can use liquid glue for this as well. I'm getting a little bit better at placing my layers straight. So I feel a little more confident using my snail. All right. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is use my new label punch. I can't think of the exact name for this right now, but it makes a label. On my blog, I'll have all of the names and product numbers. I'm going to punch that out. And now we're going to do some stamping. So from this, I'm using the Love What You Do stamp set. And the stamps we're using for this card is this these beautiful flowers and the thank you sentiment. I've just got a scrap of very vanilla here. That's what I'm using. And with my memento ink pad, get this punch out of the way. I'm gonna stamp these flowers. Ooh, luckily that was a crisp image. I totally forgot to use my stamp and pierce mat underneath, which usually gives me the best image. So I've stamped some flowers on a scrap and I'm also stamping these flowers on my label. And I'm going to move these flowers around where I would like them. And it's okay if they end up falling a little bit off the label. That's the look I'm going for, like so.
and I'm also going to stamp my thank you. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because as you see the words on the thank you stamp are going across and I want them to fill this empty space and go down like that. So with this particular stamp, I'm actually just going to, because it's pretty easy to divide the two words when you're inking up. So I'm just inking up off of the edge of my ink pad and making sure to only ink up the word thank first, making sure I don't have any ink on the other word. Stamp that down. I'm cleaning this off on the side on my stamp and scrub, but I really, really want to make sure I don't have any remnants of that ink left behind. So I'm taking a baby wipe and just making sure I get that stamp good and cleaned off. And now I'll do the same thing with the word you, I'll just ink it up along the edge of my ink pad. That's pretty easy, huh? Okay. <clears throat> Now for the super fun part, we're going to do some coloring. Now, some of you may know this, this may be news to some of you, but you can watercolor on your Whisper White cardstock and your Very Vanilla cardstock. So I'm going to watercolor these flowers with my Rich Razzleberry ink, and I'm using my aqua painter that has the finer tip. So I'm just kind of testing this to feel how wet. I don't want this tip super wet, but wet enough to pick up this ink and make a nice pretty watercolor. So to get my palette here, I've squeezed my ink pad together to get some ink in the cover of my ink pad. And I'm just gonna go in here and fill in my flower. I'm not using a lot of water because this isn't watercolor paper. I don't want it super wet. But I do want it to do some nice shading. So when I start with the dark, I'm filling in near the base of the flower petals. And then as the ink gets used up, I work my way with my brush to the outside. And if it starts to get a little light, that's okay. I just come back in, re-ink my brush, and fill in. Okay, and now on to the third flower. This fine tip brush really can get into some tight spaces. I was very, very pleasantly surprised. There we go. And now you've got some gorgeous shaded colors. If you'd like, you can stop right here and put your card together. I wanted a three-dimensional look to my card. So what I did here was colored in these next flowers. And then I fussy cut them. So you can see how that fine tip just gets right even in that very small space. 
and I don't have a lot of water in my brush, just enough to pick up that ink and color in these petals. While you can watercolor on this paper, it isn't meant to hold big globs of ink. So I'm being cognizant of that as I color these in. And wherever you want to add some darker color, just come back in, pick it up. and go back over. Easy, huh? Then when you're done, all you have to do is just clean out your aqua painter tip so that there's no more uh, ink in there. And then you are ready to go. Okay. Now, if you want a three-dimensional look, all you have to do is fussy cut these flowers. With your, I'm only gonna cut one of these out and then you can see. I just use my paper snips and I go around the edges of the petals. And where you have a tight space, you can get in right with your pointy tip of the snips. I love these scissors for fussy cutting. Of course, you're going to come back in and, and be a bit more detailed. But then all you have to do is adhere this with dimensionals. And because you've colored the flowers underneath, it's going to give these flowers a really nice three-dimensional look. You could also offset the flowers so that it looks like some are stamped direct and some are popped up. You could really do the same on the other petals like so. Okay, let's get putting our card together. So here I've got a piece of vellum. It is four and a quarter inches wide, uh, long, long or wide, whatever, by one inch. And I'm gonna adhere that to my card base. It's gonna be covered up in the center by this label, so I'm not worried about there being any ink on that center. Oh, I might be using up the last of my black baker's twine for this card, that's okay. Cut some of that <clears throat> and wrap it around a couple times so I can tie in a bow. And again, I've shared this tip with you when I'm using Baker's Twine. I like to tie it in a knot first so it stays nice and secure. And then I'll come back in and make my bow. Okay, then I just shorten my loops. And then one other tip, I'm not sure I've showed you this. If you want your bow to stay placed, I typically grab a glue dot. These are clear. You can't even tell that they're on your card. And I'll lift up the knot of my bow, set my glue dot down, and place it where I want it. That'll keep my bow from flopping all over the place and it looks really nice. Okay, then I just trim these ends. And I'm also going to use one of the pearlized doilies from this bundle. These are super cool. One side, if I can get these out of here, is pearlized. Oops, 
some of these little pieces didn't quite pop up. Um, I'm hoping that you can see with the light casting on it, one of these sides is pearlized and the other side is white, whisper white. So I'm going to cut one of these in half. And glue this down on my card. Using my snail. And to glue this down, I'm just going to slide this under the vellum layer and line it up with my baker's twine and then secure. Then you've got the banner. So let me grab a couple dimensionals, pop that up. I'm using some dimensionals that came in a paper pumpkin kit. So tip, you can use those products for other cards. Now, the reason I haven't, um, I went a little high with this, but let's try this again. The reason I haven't adhered my little flowers on is because I wanted to show you that with this card, you can leave it like this, or you can do the three dimensional flowers, whichever you prefer. So once you fussy cut, you just use a mini dimensional to attach the flowers here. You can leave it plain like this, or you can attach the flowers and get a three dimensional look whatever you like best. So here's our two cards. Using this layout and the flowers, a little bit of watercolor. Beautiful, huh? Now, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll see a little picture of me up in the corner here. Make sure you click that. Check out my blog for all the dimensions. I'll list the exact blog address in the comments down below so you can go right there. Thanks so much for stopping by. My blog is countrycardsbyrose.com. <clears throat> if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. I so appreciate when you buy from me. You become a member of my VIP page as well, so that's super fun. I give you lots more inspiration there than you see on my blog. Thanks again for stopping by and I hope you have a great rest of your day.